So, <coughs> the best negotiator is a good psychologist um, because he will need to be able to read the intentions behind the words and uh, the actions of the other side. Uh, understand what is important to them and what is not important to them. The better you are at reading the other side, the better you are at building a connection uh, and building a relationship with the other side, the more capable you are to distinguish the true intentions of the other side. And once you know the true intentions of the other side, you will be able to start in this uh, low value versus high value exchange to increase the total uh, uh, value of the deal. So creating value depends very much on psychology, on really understanding the true drivers of the other side. So that is, uh, is, a, is a very important uh, element of good negotiators. They are capable of reading the other side and by uh, mental, understanding the Mental truth. attitude mental attitude also what drives them what is important to them if you are offering something that you know is very crucial to them and that you know that has some unique elements or you can add some unique elements to your proposal that will be very attractive to the other side mm. as uh, once you know that you're able to to create a better deal for the other side and for yourself because that value you add later on you try to get from the table so psychology is, is very important uh, for negotiators well tactics already we discussed right so that's a that's very uh, uh, simple so okay so the the, the the carpet salesman in in the Middle East who's gonna ask four times more than he actually expects to get from for a carpet um, uh, then uh, the the other one is so sorry I cannot make that decision because uh, I need approval from my boss or uh, hardball negotiators who are gonna say well I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna need to have this four million that's the price take it or leave it uh, if you don't want to pay me four million, then sorry, I cannot sell you this car. Which is, of course, a, a, a basically a, a good negotiator and, and um, a seasoned negotiator would never fall for that. Would say, okay, well, because that's just a matter of winning and losing, right? Because uh, you cannot say to somebody, well, okay, I'm gonna. Then if I'm going to uh, uh, let go of a deal of 3.99999 uh, uh, yen of course you're going to take that so it's uh, uh, but it's then it's a matter of, of ego so take it or leave it is uh, is uh, usually not a recommended strategy um, a trick inviting unreciprocated unrecipro uh, uh, offers uh, so, uh, Unasan says 3.8 and then uh, instead of uh, uh, saying that I'm just going to uh, uh, increase his bid without lowering mine. Um, trying to make you finch, uh, you can make your like outrageous demands, okay, but I, I need to have it delivered by tomorrow, something like that. It can throw you off. Uh, personal insults. Uh, can happen. Uh, who the fuck do you think you are? Um, I forget that French. What was that? So basically, uh, trying to uh, shake somebody up and say, "Huh? What?" Uh, just try to see where people uh, uh, are trying to finch and and see what their positions are. So making outrageous demands uh, in terms of delivery, in terms of price, in terms of uh, 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 whatever. So Finch is basically a, a response, like uh, more or less a, a little shock. So what action he's going to take? But actually he's going to well basically... Of kind of no, no kidding kind type of answer for, give it for, for him, right? 
Yes. Well, basically, no kidding is, uh, you have to be careful, because no kidding is also uh, taking a position. That's the same as taking, uh, take it or leave it. Basically, what you do, if you, uh, you're uh, trying to let the other side know that you are aware of what they're doing, and you're going to kindly ask them to refrain from this kind of uh, a negotiation tactic. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so I, uh, I hear you're saying this, but we both know that this is not, uh, this is probably not a, a reasonable uh, request. So let's try to focus on uh, bringing most val uh, value to both sides of the table and continue with where we were. So uh, basically calling somebody out of uh, using uh, uh, manipulative strategies during negotiation. Yes, Finch. Yes, Finch. <laughs> if, if somebody's trying to make you Finch, then okay, try to stay calm and, and say, okay, I understand what you're trying to do, uh, but let's not engage in these kinds of negotiation tactics. Um, and see if we can get get a good deal for both of us. Okay. So that's uh, that's the calm best down. strategy. Calm down, stay calm, uh, and and but but call it out. So uh, let the other side know that you know what they're trying to do. Okay, I understand. Mm. Okay, let's move to the next uh, tactics to finish. Okay. Right. We did. Yes. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna put this in a in a in a document, yeah. um, and and you're going to update also, we, the concept. We did this one, right? Yes. All right. So this is an assignment. Value. Um, so value negotiation is that that basically what you're going to do is you're going to uh, look at your objectives and. You, your expectations about the, the objectives of the other side. And um, then you're going to say, okay, let's see if based based on our expectations of what, what, what our objectives are and what the other side's objectives are, what can we give to the other side that will, um, uh, in, ex in, in exchange, for what the other side can give to us. So how, what kind of things can we ask? <coughs> what kind of things can we offer in order to increase the value of the deal? And <coughs> then you're going to prioritize the objectives and associate them with a, with a, a real base. Like a, a you say you is a buyer? Buyer or seller, doesn't matter. Basically, uh, <coughs> uh, if it's a buyer-seller situation, then... Uh, uh, you actually, oh, you okay? So in the in the first uh, bullet point, th that you. It doesn't really matter w which side of the table you are. <coughs> it's a generic uh, approach. <coughs> so if my objective, for example, is that I want my objective to buy this car f for uh, three point six, right? But my expectations is that, for example, the other side wants to, uh, wants, or actually, that, that's, I know that already, he's asking for four. But my objective is, is, is 3.6. A further objective is that actually I want to have winter tires, I would like to have a car studio, and I would like to have a sunroof. Those are my expectations. <coughs> and uh, I expect the other side not to put these in, and <laughs> if they are going to add them to the deal, it's going to be uh, going to cost for the car studio, this, that, and the other. So basically, um, I actually have the money available already, so we can make them an offer um, that we want a price reduction, a significant price reduction, in exchange for making immediate payment on the car. So this is how you're going to prepare and say, okay, so let's look at what we want, our positions, their expected position, and what we can offer to the deal in order to make the other side make concessions on, on their position. Um, also, what you're gonna do is not only give your keyboard your hope, 
about uh, the 3.6, for example, but you're going to say, well, I want to pay, I, I hope to pay 3.6, but if the car is going to be more than 3.8, I'm going to walk. I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to buy this car. I'm going. I'm going to look for a, for a different car, or I'm going to buy the other car that I already already found uh, because that car I can get for um, for three point uh, for three point six. Um, and I, I I would like to have the car that I'm going to negotiate. Um, I'm going to negotiate first, but that's basically uh, my my base my, my real base uh, price and um, in terms of stereo is that okay I'm I'm okay but I, I need to have speakers in this car for example <coughs> so you're going to say okay this is my aspiration and this is my real base so be, be, it, you need to have a, a deal somewhere between oh, yeah, we have something uh, this one. Yes. Real base and aspiration. Yes. But no so, for example, in terms of price, my real base price as a buyer is three point eight. My aspiration price is um, is three uh, is uh, is uh, three point six. Now, the seller is aspiration price is four, right? And his uh, real base price is uh, 3.7 so probably the price needs to be somewhere between 3.6 and 3.7 otherwise it's not a deal mm. so you need to figure out whether there is common ground in terms of prices so that you can actually make make a compromise now you also need to prioritize which elements of the deal are most important, like price or accessories or financing or things like that. Because even though the re your the buyer's real base and aspiration uh, zone versus the seller's uh, aspiration zone can not meet, but if we are going to add other elements to the deal, we will still be able to uh, meet eye to eye. Mm -hmm. So that's you're going to do that for all the different elements of the of the deal. So you're gonna design the deal and look at okay, so where what do we expect from the other side? What do we expect from our side? And then we're going to negotiate on every element of the deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to also look at badness, of course. Um, what what? Hey, if if this, uh, for example, this, uh, uh, I can try to get this deal, th this car for 3.6, but if I know that this car is actually in high demand, um, then uh, and and the, the, the normal price is uh, is uh, is four, then uh, probably the batna of the of the uh, of the car salesman is pretty good when it comes down to price. So mm -hmm. in that case, I will need to adjust my um, my aspiration price. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and concession strategy is basically looking at, okay, I'm gonna exchange this for that, right? So I'm gonna ch exchange price for financing. That's that's we're gonna put these two to, uh, together. And if that doesn't work, maybe we need to add accessories to it. So last week um, here we did right uh, with this issue right right yes I think we did yeah right okay so that's that's the that's the workshop uh, case so uh, our the our deal objectives are uh, oh, uh, ideal outcome. So I want to have I want to pay three point six plus a sunroof plus a car stereo, and financing. Um, but I'm willing to settle for uh, a car without sunroof, with stereo at three point eight, um, without financing. That's my minimum acceptable deal. Mm. And uh, so prioritize means okay, which deals are important. 
than uh, alternative options that you have. So one or two other cars that that, that you uh, your bad you need to identify and prepare concessions. So these things do not happen by accident; they happen by design. Uh, so that also helps the negotiator to 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 stay cool. And if somebody's tried to ruffle your feathers or or try to make you twitch, then you can stay cool because you already you already know how you're going to deal with the situation. Mm. Now, of course, not every Western negotiator is going to negotiate this way. It also depends how much vested interest you have in the deal. Mm -hmm. If you're going to buy a car for your for your family, um, that is a big expense. So you may want to actually invest in mm -hmm. that uh, in that uh, in buying that car. Invest the time. Invest the the effort. To look at Batna seriously, to look at what, uh, uh, for example, prices are the market prices are of the uh, of of this kind of car with this kind of mileage. Um, so therefore, uh, Western negotiators who are willing to invest will prepare uh, a um, a negotiation strategy like this. Mm. So then we're going to look at, uh, at process and basically that is how are we going to run the negotiation. Mm -hmm. um, that is basically just, just, just how are we going to situate, what is the location like, um, uh, who's going to take care of what, um, how, who's going to make the, uh, the, the, and this is actually quite important, the framing station, the framing statement. Um, so very what do you mean framing framing is basically um create is actually creating more or less the model against which we're going to negotiate and setting the agenda uh and uh basically creating the model for negotiation so so uh, uh when we are going to negotiate for a car, I'm going to be assertive and say, okay, thank you very much. So let's make a meeting in my office uh, on Thursday and um, I will uh, I will send you a highlight of, of the car. I will prepare this and that and that. I believe we have already agreed on this, that and that. And uh, so for us to finally, with what we need to discuss is warranty and price. Is that correct? So by doing that, by, by framing it, I lead the discussion. I kind of try to push you in a certain direction. So I decide the rules of the game to my advantage. So that is framing, um, framing the discussion, trying to set the agenda, trying to uh, lead the other side into going where you want to go. And uh, another uh, thing is, for example, okay, how, what kind of questions are am I going to ask? Mm -hmm. So that can be that can be main questions, or can you tell me more about this? So, for example, mm -hmm. uh, so what 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 is what is your expectation about price? And you would say three point six. So, can you tell me what why three point six is a fair price to you? Mm -hmm. And and uh, do you have any other? Uh, uh, cars that you're currently looking at for in this price range and um, uh, so these kinds of probing questions will give you a better understanding of the psychology of the uh, behind the position mm. right so the better you understand the psychology the better you, uh, you can prepare a rule so uh, you are going to prepare these questions up front. So people who are negotiating, they have a list of questions that they are, they are going to ask during the negotiation to, uh, to get as much information as they can. Mm. Um, then also what you're going to do is that you're going to, your team, there is somebody who is going to do all the question and answer. <coughs> there's somebody who's going to take the facilitator role, there's somebody who's going to do the observation role. Maybe there is a good cop and a bad cop. Uh, so these roles you're all going to assign to your team. And uh, you're going to structure it. So you're going to set the agenda, you're going to negotiate, you're going to think about the venue. So for example, uh, you're going to, you, you, you can book a nice 
suite in a hotel um, in a nice atmosphere with uh, copious meals and take your time. What and do you mean they believe? They believe. They believe. They the believe. Not English. Debrief, yeah, it is English. What do you mean? Uh, so basically, that is the evaluation of uh, of the uh, negotiation. So debrief is basically, uh, yeah, some kind of evaluation of uh, what happened. Debrief. Mm. This is English. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, uh, the process is actually uh, very important and the more in control you are, the more you can you can uh, influence the outcome. So what I was saying, for example, about the the venue is that if you if you really want to um, uh, if you don't want to be competitive, if you want to actually uh, create a good atmosphere, you're going to look for a nice place. You're going to take time. You're going to have a lot of wining and dining in between, and and. Uh, 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 but that is completely different from actually uh, going, uh, inviting somebody uh, in uh, in a, uh, in your own office, uh, putting them in some kind of uh, a small room without uh, without uh, windows, uh, making them wait, uh, switching off the air conditioner, uh, not giving anybody any uh, uh, water or uh, or food or anything, and trying to basically. Uh, make them want to go away and er, as uncomfortable as possible mm. um, so also about the setup what kind of chairs uh, how, how are we going to organize are we going to have a round table or are we going to have a square table how are we going to situate the individual members are we going to do one side versus the other side or are we going to put people uh, are going to mingle around the table so uh, who's going to take notes um, and 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 when are we going to uh, uh, debrief so these things they all are of influence mm. uh, influence the end result of the negotiation mm. so framing is basically helps you to gain control uh, if, because you decide uh, how to uh, what to focus on, um, and and you decide okay uh, which objectives you would like to achieve, and you're going to uh, if you're in the position to um, to frame the negotiation, you can actually address all your objectives and put them on the agenda. Um, um, so if if uh, if you have that position, if the other side doesn't influence and just follows you in your calendar, in your agenda, you can have a um, you can have a big advantage. Mm. Uh, so uh, shape aspirations. Um, basically, just a, a matter of in preparation. But the higher you set your as your aspirations. Uh, the, 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 the better results you, you can get this is just about okay <coughs> if you're going to a job negotiate uh, 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 to a job interview and you are going to aim for a uh, for a uh, uh, 5 million salary you're never going to get more than 5 but if you're going to aim for an 8 million salary then uh, uh, you might end up getting 5 but you're much more likely to get something close to 8 so sh your aspirations also determine your outcome to a very high extent. So you can be as successful as your own asp aspirations. If you make them too modest, you will never get a better result than your aspirations. So that's very important. Um, uh, I like concerns about potential losses. Um, that is something that you want to do uh, during the um, negotiation so if you are selling something and you in your preparations you're going to make sure that you are going to uh, 
tell them like okay so if you're not gonna buy that car I'm gonna tell you there's no car like this anywhere in this uh, in, in Tokyo in the whole of Tokyo for this price you cannot find it I guarantee you this so if you do not get this car then you will have to settle for a different kind of model or uh, things like that so you, you basically you're going to show them what they will not get because what they will not get will probably make more um, will, will make more uh, impact than what they will get and people are more sensitive towards what they will lose than to what they than to what they will actually gain people hate to lose uh, certain things you say shape aspiration no the one below that highlight concerns yes so what what uh, what you might lose so for a very simple case for example insurance uh, so if you would happen if there would happen to be a fire then you will lose everything right there's nothing that you can replace it with so that fear of loss will be very very precious uh, in 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 the minds of of people so highlighting what they will not get is very effective to move people to agreeing with your uh, uh, proposal um, then unique benefits of course um, and this, so uh, you say okay well this th th we have a, a unique benefit because this car is uh, electric it's the lowest price in in its in its category it has a unique uh, it has very low maintenance cost and this and that and the other uh, so th these things that, the, that that make them stand out versus the competition mm -hmm. and point out potential losses if they do not buy that car so if the, you happen to for example buy the competitor car it's it's a good car but you will miss out on the uh, radius that the car has so, so you will not get a 300 kilometer uh, radius with this electric car you will not get um, well this that and the other so uh, uh, unique benefits and and potential losses that are uh, obviously uh, important points to highlight mm -hmm. uh, your deal and this is just like for a salesman that is unique but in, in negotiation that in negotiation in general that also applies invoke common ground and emphasize collective benefits so this is especially important in the initial stages of negotiation mm. um, most uh, there is this kind of psychology in people that if you say yes like multiple times in a row like okay so wouldn't you agree that that if we would actually be able to 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 get an agreement on this uh, project that would be beneficial to both of our organizations yes uh, and would uh, and and uh, and do you think that this car would actually um, uh, would, if, would do you think that your family would would like to drive around in this car? Yes. Mm. And uh, so, what what do you think uh, uh, the, the 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 response of your uh, of your colleagues would do you think they would be envious of your car? Yes. And etc etc and and have you uh, what do you think about the brand value of this car uh, do you think it has a good reputation yes mm. then by doing that you're 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 uh, basically uh, already conditioning people to say yes to the other things as well um, this is probably something that Westerners love to do, but establish and control the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, we love to set the agenda. We'd love to take control and and drive where we want to go by uh, taking control already before we even start a negotiation. So this is uh, uh, something that we are pretty keen on. And um, also, during the process, during the negotiation, constantly highlighting, okay, so what did we already compromise to? We already gave you, so we, we actually made a concession. We lowered our price from four to 
we gave you financing and we throw in this sunroof so I think uh, basically uh, so by doing that you're not only getting a good price you're also getting more car than you would get anywhere else that will basically uh, is going to a um, uh, towards a, not only uh, uh, making your concessions look more expensive but also going towards uh, closing of the deal so uh, you, wouldn't you agree that I already been very generous already been very collaborative so now comes the time to say yes or no um, and avoid win-lose well that's in general that's a uh, uh, what do you mean win-lose flaming avoid mm. win-lose flaming what do you mean avoid avoid it so say so, okay uh, basically uh, win-lose framing okay this is actually the buy and the buy and the seller seller okay. yes yeah. the, they don't feel any win or lose right so basically uh, what you would try to do is, is uh, okay don't don't remain appealing win or lose right, 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 right. so basically you want to always give the other side the feeling that they are winning like uh, instead of win loot, instead of win loot, right? They they believe this was a good deal. This is a good deal. Yeah, they feel that they did an awesome awesome deal negotiating, and the other side. Why? But because like a for seller for standpoint, buyer feel okay. We won. He won. Yes. This is a good image for the sellers. You know. Yes. Right. Give. right. Why win lose? Blame it. So we, you don't want to get win win lose. Basically, we get a we get a good deal. Uh, so not uh, 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 so you 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 you. But basically, uh, you know, sellers believe you win. So we need to give them winning image for him. This image is important for them. <clears throat> right. Well. Um, but this meaning, right? Don't leave so d don't Im image of win or lose. That that you won in okay, this okay, negotiation. Okay, that's that's the. Okay. Uh, about questions. Uh, so uh, before negotiation, you need to prepare questions. Uh, the questions are there to discover their interests, their goals, decision making process, <coughs> uh, basically to 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 find their values behind their positions uh, <coughs> and it also helps you to to not forget uh, to ask questions during negotiation um, so uh, preparing questions <coughs> obviously is uh, is uh, very beneficial and um, every question needs to be followed with uh, nurturing questions uh, to find okay t can you tell me a little bit more <coughs> about or when you say this uh, do you mean that um, and when you uh, so when, when you are when you say 3.6 is that the price that you think <laughs> is fair or or uh, or no 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 that's my that's my really my my base price okay so you say that's the base price mm -hmm. does that mean that that uh, you will never be able to afford anything more or is that what you currently have uh, um, so maybe yeah, that, that that will uh, po point the light on on financing. Um, so, for example, ask this question: wh What are the key elements of the deal that you are looking for? Uh, and then wait for the answer, and then and then ask: Okay, why are these key, element, uh, key elements that you have identified? So, well, why is that important to you? And can you tell me more about and? Uh, what impact does this have on your organization and what would be your ideal solution these things are uh, questions these questions are uh, are helping you to uh, to get a better understanding of the other side hmm. so if we would put this in in a in a japanese context how does that translate to the japanese negotiations Strategy. Uh, this is uh, uh, last last week I discussed with you 
Japanese is negotiation style is different from Westerners. Mainly, they are not like a kind of negotiation tactics. We don't have it.、Mm. Basically, more fewer, very few tactics we have.、Mm. And we're going to buy one. We don't buy. Right. And、uh, because based on、uh, the mutual trust,、uh, American or European people have more allowances for negotiating amount. But here in Japan, we don't have so much. Cost plus、uh, pricing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Allowances. So、uh, we, we cannot so much negotiation. So, not the right kind of question we can make. So, we are, we are in a negotiation, we are aiming to get、uh, as much, to identify as much value that the other side has. So, as, as, as a supplier, we are trying to figure out how much value our proposal has to the other side and then get the best reward for that. Benefit. So it doesn't focus <coughs> at all on our internal cost structure. It can't get I, actually.、Uh, okay, it's, it's, that said, our, our real base, our cost structure sets our real base, but it doesn't limit our aspiration price or aspiration conditions. So our aspirations are basically fed by what we discover about the client because we believe that. It, If we can identify that what we have to offer is very valuable to them, we want to get,、uh, be, we want to be rewarded accordingly. So, if we discover that the other side puts very high value on our product or our, on our service, then we want to have a high price for it. But in Japan, I believe that it's the, it is more or less okay, we look at our Cost structure and we give the price that we believe is fair.、Uh, so, if, if, if we can produce something for, for 80, then we're going to sell it to them for 100 because that we have a 20% profit margin which we believe is fair.、Mm. Usually, we don't negotiate 20% discount. The, if the counterpart, you know, seller is an established person, we don't ne- need to negotiate. Of course, local seller or Small dealer, we might be negotiated, ask them discount price, but usually they don't, they don't offer them more cheaper price, they、mm. don't try to negotiate.、Mm. Okay? And, or we'll buy or we'll not buy. Right. 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 Yeah, so, so we just vote with our feet. So we're just going to walk away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but not, really, not really discussing. Every element of the deal inside and out. Mm. Mm. Westerners, I think,、uh, uh, for example, contract or consulting business, something,、uh, they have big allowances. Okay, They, need, they don't want to pay the 5 million, they want to cut it half. Right. Possible. <coughs> okay, we're going to cut it half. But the Japanese case is 5 million, 5 million. <coughs> no, no, no. Right. And,、uh, Because、uh, European case, European people, okay, we're going to cut, cut half because they try to eliminate this kind of support, this kind of services, this kind of function. And the、uh, uh, buyer will be going to accept what kind of offer.、Mm. Japanese cases,、uh, okay, this five million, five case、uh, functions, the、uh, services they're going to require for the s-、uh, seller, right? So、uh, seller cannot negotiate. Uh, the, 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 the services, they take services out and prices are going down. They, they don't do that. This kind of qualification. Well, right.、Uh-huh. right. There's, basically, Japan will offer the full service, full product range,、yeah. full technology at their specs,、One、at exa- their conditions.、Yeah. One example is、uh, Takashi told me Australian company selling the bleach to Vietnam. They're going to offer the, okay, one fifth of price they can offer, <coughs> offer to the Australian company. Australian company say, of course, yes, we're going to deliver the bridge, but、uh, conditions like so and so. It's good. Yeah, 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 one fifth. They offer the, the proposal, but Japanese company never do that.、Mm. No discount. The qualify is not, the quality will not sustain.、Mm. So they don't submit proposal. Right. So, this is a big difference. Westerners is very flexible. Yeah. 
Right. So we look at the customer and say, okay, what can you afford? And we can see, okay, what can, what can we offer for that price? So this is we need to study for Westana's idea, the thinking approach. Japanese is very sticking to the quality. Right. For everything. So yeah, but actually we are also kind of uh, ayashi because like when when our salespeople are discovering that the other side has a certain budget for for a project then we're going to offer something that will fit that budget but what we are offering is probably not enough to satisfy what they actually need so there is a uh, for for the customer side there is a <coughs> there is a there is a budget that probably doesn't suit their needs but instead of addressing that issue uh it would be possible that uh, we just basically just offer something that fit that budget and then uh later on in the project we will discover that it doesn't s suit their needs and then we say well, yeah sorry if you want more then we need to renegotiate the project or we need to add or need need to uh, add a second project or a third project mm. Okay, let's move. Right. Well, let's break. I, yeah, actually, I need to I go, go to the toilet. To, okay. <laughs> Are you going to continue? Yeah, shall we continue? No? Yeah. No. No? We're going to move into Africa. san tsukareteru. Yeah, I'm getting tired of the negotiation. <laughs> it's okay? Negotiation next week. Ano, Takai san, okay? Yeah, he is sleeping. He was sleeping there. <laughs> sleeping. Oh. He's not sleeping at all. <laughs> <laughs> he took a rest. <coughs> oh, we're only going to finish negotiation. Next week we'll continue. Are you okay? But next Monday we're going to have. Yeah, sorry, Monday I can't. I have a presentation Monday, Monday, Monday morning. So we're going to, so following Monday? Uh, Dekiri, I know I'm extremely busy at this moment. Oh, it means uh, 25th, right? Yeah, so 20th. April 1st? April 1st, come on. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a do you need a uh, coffee? I will get. No, he will go in there. No, no, he will go in to buy coffee. Yeah, yeah. I will go. Uh, I buy the coffee. So I, I give you money? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, I will do some. Coffee. Yeah, three coffee. Okay. Onegaishimasu, but I already got your coffee. Huh? Yeah, uh, more. More than that. Okay. Takashi break, man. And Edo will go into the toilet. I'm going to put a. Put it on a sweater, it's a, it's a bit... Huh? Put on what? It's cold? So, I'm a bit cold. I'm also a bit hungry. Hungry? I played, I played four hours tennis this morning. Oh, you're happy. <laughs> Accenture uh, still not decide to... Really? Yeah, she just uh, considered for my proposal, but... Uh, Did he contact you? 